Hey, what's up guys? We are finally at part three of the 131 cubic inch lowrider S build. Now, for you guys who are new here uh, and just stumbling across the channel, my name's Tommy. I'm a master technician here at Darling Downs Harley Davidson in Toowoomba. All right, so a lot of you guys know if you've been following along since part one and two, you'll know what we're up to, but uh, this is part three. So I've got some uh, T-Man high compression pistons for the 131 and I'm also changing out the cam again from the 512 Cyclorama to a Cyclorama 540. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty exciting, got some uh, cool stuff happening. So we're gonna head into the workshop in a minute and jump onto the whiteboard. I've got some stuff that I'm gonna explain about compression ratios, dynamic compression ratio, and how it affects different builds and that sort of stuff. So uh, let's get into the workshop and uh, get into it. over here at the whiteboard. Now, forgive my artistic skills, but I've got some components here to show you to help, uh, to aid in understanding what I've uh, got drawn here. So we can talk about compression ratio and what we call dynamic compression ratio. So uh, what we're looking at, of course, is a piston here, a conrod, a crankshaft. Now this up the top, this is to represent, these lines represent the cylinder walls. So we have across here the bore and the, um, the stroke, the top of this here is, is the combustion chamber. So th at the moment, the piston is down at bottom dead center. This is the furthest the piston is going to travel down as the crankshaft rotates. So at the moment from here to here, this is our stroke. Now the, the uh, dimension across the walls of the cylinder here, this is the bore. Now, up the top, we have this dotted line. That is to represent the highest the piston will travel or top dead center. So as the crankshaft rotates, it's gonna bring the, the conrod and the piston up and this line represents top dead center. So that's the furthest the piston is gonna to travel to the top. Now the area above that is the combustion chamber. So what we do, this is the combustion chamber here. This is the bore and the stroke. So just to help you understand what we're looking at, this is a cylinder head. So this area in here where the valves are, we can see we have volume. So what we do, we can measure that. We put a piece of uh, flat plexiglass across there and we pour uh, liquid in there and we measure the volume. And that's how we, we measure this volume of the cylinder head. So this has a volume and so does and so does the cylinder so of course the piston travels up and down I have a piston here so the piston goes up and down inside the cylinder all right so we're looking at just a cross-sectional drawing of this cylinder if we imagine we cut the cylinder in half that's what we're looking at so we have bore stroke combustion chamber now, we measure all these values. In this case, we have a bore of 4.310 inches, okay? And we have a stroke of 4.5 inches. Now, we also measure our combustion chamber. Now, depending on what we're trying to achieve out of the engine, we will change the combustion chamber size either by skimming some meat off the uh, base of the cylinder head here. So we machine this down, therefore that brings this surface a little bit closer so therefore the volume gets a little bit smaller so compression ratio is the volume of this combustion chamber and the volume of the cylinder so basically all that means is how many times this volume fits into this volume now you're going to see static advertised compression ratios around the place and one of one of them the pretty typical one that comes to mind is 10 to one. So we have a, this volume here fits into this volume 10 times. So we have a 10 to one compression ratio. Now, as we get into dynamic compression, which is what's important when we're building high performance engines, is the uh, actual, the effective stroke of when the intake valve actually closes. So up the top here we have, inside the cylinder head, we have an intake valve. 
and we have an exhaust valve. Now, you do not start compressing air until the intake valve closes, of course, because you know, there's a hole in the cylinder head until the valve shuts. So therefore, we're not compressing air until that intake valve has closed. Now, most high performance camshafts or high RPM, high horsepower camshafts have a very late intake closing time. Now, what we can do is we work it, so we need the rod length, we need the, um, the bore, the stroke, the combustion chamber, all these values, which is what we do when I build and measure an engine and, and we're doing all that stuff. So with this uh, particular build, we're using a high compression piston. So you can see the dome is, is raised on the top of the piston so this area is raised so therefore what's actually happening is we are reducing the volume in the cylinder because our piston has a big lump on top of it okay so that's taking up volume so now by just adding those pistons we've gone from say remember our 10 to 1 adding those pistons might bump us up to well actually in this case those pistons are going to bump this engine up to 12.5 four, five to one. Now that sounds relatively high, it's, it's quite moderate, but 12 and a half, around 12 and a half to one, okay? But remember, that's only static. We're not gonna compress any air until the intake valve is closed. So we need to input our intake closing time. In this case, it's 45 degrees after bottom dead center. So what that means, that now this value here is expressed in crankshaft degrees. Now, of course, we know a camshaft is driven at half engine speed. So if we can imagine we've got zero degrees there, and then we have 360, we all know a circle has 360 degrees in it. So after bottom dead center, so that's here at 180, okay? Zero, 180, 360. This 45 degrees after bottom dead center, represents the crankshaft moving 45 degrees. So if we can imagine here, that's 90 degrees, 45 somewhere here. So the crankshaft is going to rotate to 45 degrees past bottom dead center. And while it's doing that, of course the conrod is moving up the cylinder. So if we just rub this out and draw a little representation. As the conrod uh, crankshaft has moved 45 degrees past bottom dead center, our piston has come up the bore X amount. Here's our rings. So you can see from before we were at bottom dead center, the top of the piston was down here. What's happened now, the pistons move up because we didn't shut the intake valve until 45 degrees after bottom dead center. So we've, our stroke of four and a half inches is no longer, it's shorter than that. Okay, so now our values have changed. So what that does is bring our, this is just round figures off the top of my head from the calculations earlier, I think it's about 11.4. Eleven point four to one. So we started out. We put those big lump top pistons in there. We brought it up to twelve point four five, and we're like, "Yahoo! We're going to make some awesome power." But hang on, we're not closing the intake valve until forty-five degrees after bottom dead center. Now remember, the pistons moved up the cylinder. We've lost our effective stroke. It's gotten shorter from down here. This was four and a half inches. Now we're somewhere around four inches of stroke. So we've lost some stroke, therefore we've lost volume. So our number is now lower. So that's dynamic compression. That is a big indication as to how the engine is going to perform. Hope that's helped guys. Enough of this. Let's get back to the build, get it together and ramp it up on the dyno and see what it's gonna do.
back in the dyno. Now, we'll just do a quick recap for uh, new viewers of this video. Uh, we'll just recap on, on what, we, uh, what we're up to. Okay, so at the start, we were a completely stock 114 low rider S and we made 80 horsepower and 103 foot, well 102.95 foot pounds of torque. And then I bolted on a Screaming Eagle 131 stage four kit. Now it's completely stock, bolt on, just had a good exhaust on there in the air cleaner and I managed to tune it up to get 137.5 and 141.5. Now, after that, part two, I did a uh, cam swap. Now I went to a Cyclorama 512 and still left the bolt-on kit the same, just changed the camshaft and I managed to go tune it up and get 147 horsepower and 149 foot-pounds of torque. Enough of that, a uh, quick recap. So let's get into it and see what this thing's gonna make now. been out for a ride on it and the thing is running beautifully so I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, what we've got out of it I'll take his up and um, show you the uh, the run run sheep what we made and give you a look but um, I didn't quite make exactly what I wanted so what we get 155 and 151 so 155 horsepower 151 foot-pounds of torque so that's up from 147 uh, from last time from part two so we're up from 147 up to 155 now I am a little bit disappointed I didn't quite make that 160 horsepower mark I was really aiming for that well, I was aiming for at least 160 I wanted it to, to do so you know I could have, have uh, essentially doubled the uh, output from stock as you know we were at 80 horsepower to start with uh, then we got up to 137 then we got up to 147 with a cam swap and now we're up to 155. So look, a gain is a gain. That's eight horsepower. That's uh, nothing to shy away from, but uh, you're just a little bit disappointed that I couldn't get it to 160. I'm just not sure uh, if, if I just, I don't know why. Maybe just a combination of the pipe with, I don't know. There's, um, who knows why. But anyway, look, it fell just short of what I wanted it to, but it's still, like 155 horsepower and 151 foot-pounds of torque is nothing to be uh, disappointed about. But uh, I'm going to get this one out on the track and um, compare it to the, the last 128 cube that I did and see if it's going to be quicker than that. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming up soon when I do some racing on it. I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and waiting for part three. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Mark. Uh, your your build's coming up soon, mate. Uh, Mark's ordered a bike from you know, this build series. He's built ordered a Lowrider S, and we're building uh, pretty much an identical combination to, to this one here. So uh, shout out to Mark, mate. I can't wait to build your bike. So uh, yeah, that'll be an upcoming video as well. But uh, until then, guys, we'll see you in the next one.